Hey guys, I'm going to um, work the practice problems in 3.4a. I mean B, I already worked A. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so here we go. And I want to talk about something, but I'll show it to you. Okay, so here we are. Let me turn off my, my phone. Okay. So quiz five, I mean, this is all on your new calendar. It's on Hawks, it's everywhere. Quiz five is due Tuesday, March 31st at 11.59 p.m. And it's got 3.4a, which we've already done, and 3.4b, which I'm doing today. So you can have that done. Okay, so tomorrow I'll have, um, I mean, the lecture videos are already there. So you can look at them, you can use Hawks. You know, they've got videos, they've got Hawks TV, all kind of stuff. But I'm just working out problems with my voice just in case you want a step by step. Okay. But quiz six is due Tuesday, April 7th. Okay. All right. And that's on three, five, and five, three. But I got to tell you that test three is due Sunday, April 12th, and that's Easter Sunday. But normally the test would be due on Friday. So that gives you extra days. So when we say it's due, I mean, honestly, you could have test three done this week. Okay. So go ahead and do what you can. If you choose to wait until Easter Sunday, I do not want an email about how you're going to have to miss Easter with your family. It's because you waited till the last minute. And um, Ron Shapiro, who passed away this year, who owned the Hoka, had a thing on his wall that said, bad planning on your part does not necessarily constitute an emergency on mine. So plan ahead. I will be with my family on Easter. I won't be checking email. Okay. So just know these are extra days. Normally it would be due on Friday. Okay. So with that out of the way, let's talk about 3.48. Okay, I mean B, gosh, I'm sorry, 3.4B. Okay, so I have the problems printed out. My sweet husband did that for me, and now I, I have so many papers. All right, so homework 3.4B. So here's a function, and it says find the critical values of the function. All right, well, critical values for us, are gonna be the same thing as horizontal tangents. Now, in reality, that's not the truth. It would also be where the derivative is undefined, but that's just not gonna happen for us because we have um, cut back on some of the harder material so that we can get through this all online without it being a hardship. So remember, critical values for us is gonna be the same as horizontal tangents. from 3.4a, and that means we just set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, so if this is my function, 2x squared minus 28x. Okay, so the critical values I set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x mm, seven. Let's see, twenty-eight. Let's get out of that twenty-eight divided by four is seven. Yes, okay. Seven is my critical value. So right here, the answer is seven, okay? Part two says use the first derivative test. That was our sign chart to find any local extrema, okay? That was the local max and local min. So at your critical value, when you make your sign chart, if it goes up and then down, that's a local max. And at your critical value, if it goes down and then up, that's your local min. 
So we're doing the same thing that we did with increase and decrease, except we're reading something. We're not talking about where it increases and decreases. We're just talking about this maximum and this minimum. Okay, so we're gonna make a chart, a first derivative sign chart, and put my critical value on there, seven. Okay, so we're gonna pick test values. I've broken up the graph into um, the x-axis into two parts. I'm gonna pick any number to the left. I like to pick zero when I can. I'm gonna pick a number to the right. These are my test numbers, and I'm gonna plug my test numbers into my derivative. So f prime of zero, and here's my derivative. Okay, I'm just plugging zero in for x is negative 28. And really all I care about is that it is negative. Okay, and what's f prime at seven? Um, no, 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 eight, I'm sorry. Okay, so f prime at eight into my derivative here, y'all, I'm plugging into my derivative. There it is, right there. So eight times four is what, 32? minus 28 and I get positive four. So all we really care about is that it's positive. And so I'm decreasing and increasing. So whenever you have a local max or a local min, it always occurs at a critical value, okay? So let's look. I have one critical value at x is equal to seven. So do I have a local max or a local min? What does that look like? It meets at the bottom, so that's a local min. So there is a no local max, and the local min occurs at x is equal to seven, okay? But what it asks you to do is to write the minimum as an ordered pair. Okay, let's look at this. So use the first derivative test to find any local extrema, local max or local min, and enter any local extrema as an ordered pair. Okay, so if this is my x, so my local max, I mean my local min, my x is seven, how do I find my y value? Remember, y is f of x. So my y is f of seven. So I plug seven into my original function, okay? So whenever you're looking for a, the y part of a point, plug x into your original function. The y part of any point, plug x into the original function, f of x. So f of seven, and if you're anything like me, okay, so I'm gonna plug seven in. So I'm gonna clear it and say seven and store for x and enter. And, um, and oh i've stored it for z so seven store for x and enter and i'm going to plug it into 2x squared minus 28 and push my button and i get 70. okay so that lets me do the arithmetic without messing up so um 70. so i have the point seven comma 70 and that's my local min and there is no local max Okay, all right, but remember what I told you in um, part A? Let's get my sheet that we were looking at, okay? And I said, if you have a positive x squared, which I do here, do you see? If I have a, my function, if my original function is a positive x squared, it's always gonna look like this. 
And look how much work we went through to find that. So once I get this X is equal to seven, I can just draw my picture like that. It's an up parabola, and I know that I'm gonna have a local minimum at seven. So I didn't really have to go through and make the sun chart. So if you know what these functions look like, it saves, saves you a lot of work, okay? All right, so let's go look at my next problem. Problem number two. Okay, and it says find the critical values and how do we do that? We set f prime of x equal to zero and solve. So f prime of x is negative 20x plus 100 set it equal to zero, negative 20x is negative 100, and when I divide by negative 20, x is what? Five, positive, right? Okay, so look, what you could do, you could say, well, that's my critical value, it's five, this is a negative x squared, so it's gonna look like this, so I'm gonna have a local max here and no local mean. Okay, so from now on, whenever I have a, a function, a positive or a negative x squared, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go through all the steps and plug into the derivative unless I don't know what my function looks like. Okay, so I have no local min, and I have a local maximum point. Where? At five something, there's your X, and then we have to find my Y. Remember Y is F of X is the same thing as Y. So my Y is gonna be F of five. So I'm going to take my five, let's say I want you to double say. Whoops, sorry. This is really, okay. So I wanna do my five and store for X and enter. Okay, let's get it out of that light. All right, so here I go. I want you to see me. Um, clear it out, I'm gonna do five and I'm gonna store it, SEO for X and enter. Okay, then I'm going to type in my original function, which is negative 10x squared. Uh, plus 100x minus 1 and push enter and it says 249. So the y part of my point is 249. So that's my answer. My local man, I have a local max at 5 something. So I plug 5 into negative 10x squared plus 100x minus 1. Okay, all right, and that's that. That's problem number two. So problem number three is f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 72x plus 5. And step one tells me to find the critical values. So I set my derivative equal to zero and solve for x. So f prime of x is 6x squared plus 6x minus 72. Okay, so this quadratic 
means I'm probably going to get two answers. Okay, remember we could get two of the same. That doesn't happen as often. All right, so it would be a whole lot easier to factor if the coefficient of x squared was one. So let's see if a six comes out of everything. It's x squared plus x. And what's negative 72 divided by six? It's minus 12, so yeah. So I have six. And then you have to be careful. X times X is X squared. And um, six times two is 12, but there's no way to add those to get positive one. Okay, so that won't work. Um, let's do four and three. Okay, four times three is 12. And you can add those to get positive one if the four is positive and the three is negative. So let's do plus four minus three and set it equal to zero. Remember when we set the six equal to zero, it's not a true statement. There's no X, so we don't get anything there. So X is negative four and X is three. So my critical values, I have two, negative four and three. Okay, all right. So let's do the work one more time, but then I'm going to show you about what functions look like. We know what a positive x cubed function looks like. When I look at my sheet, here are my x cubes. This is the x cubed with one horizontal tangent, okay? We have an x cubed with two horizontal tangents. This saves so much work. So if I have an x cubed with two horizontal tangents and it's positive, it's going up, down, up. I have a negative x cubed with two horizontal tangents. It's going down, up, down. Okay, so what do we expect this one to do? It's positive x cubed, so we expect it to go up, down, up. Let's make sure it does. And then um, on the next one, we'll not do as much work. All right, so here I go. Here's my sign chart negative four and three. This is my first derivative sign chart. I've broken the x-axis into three parts, so I'm gonna pick test numbers in each part. Negative five, zero, I pick it when I can, and four. If it works for the numbers in those intervals, it works for every number in those intervals. So always, always test numbers plug into f prime of x, okay? So f prime of x is 6x squared plus 6x minus 72. So let's plug in my test numbers, f prime of negative five. So um, I'm probably, since I plug in a lot, I'm gonna go to my table and I'm gonna put in my function 2x, to the third, no, 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 that's not my derivative. I'm gonna put in six x squared, six x squared plus six x minus 72. And I push enter, enter, enter. Remember yours might be on auto. You can just arrow over and put it on ask. Okay, and okay. There's something in your table. I just scroll down and I delete, okay? All right, so let's put negative five in there and push enter and I get positive 48. And all we care about is that it's positive, okay? So F prime at zero, I put zero, enter, and I get negative 72. All I care about is this is negative. And then F prime at, what's my third test number? four. So F prime at four. So I just do four and enter and it gives me positive 48. Okay. So positive 48. And all we really care about is that it's positive. So positive derivative means I'm increasing. Negative derivative means I'm decreasing and positive means I'm increasing. Okay. So if you have um, local max and local min, they occur 
square at your critical values. So wherever that other sheet went. Okay, so at negative four, it goes up and then down. So it meets at the top. So that's gonna be a local max, local max. And at three, it meets at the bottom. So it's gonna be a local min, okay? So I have a local max. Is everything? I have a local maximum at x is equal to negative four. And if they want the point, then it's a negative four something. There's my x. And I plug it into what? My original function, y is always, always go to your original function. Okay, all right, so if you want, instead of using your table function, you could say, all right, so what am I plugging in? Negative four, and you store it for x and enter, and then I just put in my function, two x to the third, come down, plus three x squared, minus 72 x plus five, push enter, and I get 213. You always want to check 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 72x plus 5. Okay, so that was from reading, reading my graph. And then I have a local minimum at x is equal to 3. So that's going to be 3 something. There's your x. And how do you find your y? Is f of 3. Okay, so look. Okay, all right, so um, let's do this. Let's say three store for x and enter, and I've already got that 2x cubed in my calculator, so I just go up and highlight it and I push enter twice, and I get negative 130. So that's negative 130. So that's my local max. And this is my local min. And there's my answer. Okay. There's my sign chart that I did a lot of work to make, right? Okay, so look. What I wrote before. I have a positive x cubed with two horizontal tangents. I could have just gotten my numbers negative four and three, put them on my sign chart, and went up, down, up, up, down, up. It always does that, a positive x cubed. So we, we could have saved ourselves a lot of work. All of this work we could have saved. All of the work on the bottom, we could have saved ourselves. We just up, down, up, there's your max, there's your mean. Positive x cubed will always have a local max first and then a local mean. Okay, so. Okay, got a lot of papers, I hope it's not too confusing. Local max, local man, that's what they're asking for. Let's look at the next, we only have two more problems. Okay, problem four. Okay. So f of x is equal to negative x cubed minus 3x squared plus 45x minus 1. And they want me to do step one, find the critical values. So I'm going to set my first derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, so my first derivative is negative 3x squared minus 6x plus 45. 
and set it equal to zero. And again, we would like to have, it's easier to factor if the coefficient of x squared is one. So let's take out the negative three. And then when you divide each term by negative three, that's how you find what's left over. So it's gonna be x squared plus two x minus what's 45 divided by negative three, negative 15. Okay, so when I factor that, x times x gives me x squared, and 15 is five times three, but they have to add to get positive two, so that means my five needs to be positive, and my um, three needs to be negative, okay? That negative three, it's just a factored out number. It doesn't have a variable in it, so it doesn't give us a solution. We set x plus five equal to zero, and get x is negative five, we set x minus three equal to zero and get x is equal to three. So we have two critical values, okay? And a negative x cubed is my original function. So what did my notes tell us? I'm done with all that work. If I have two horizontal tangents are two critical values, and my original function is a negative x cubed, it's always gonna go down, up, down. So instead of going through all that testing into my derivative, I'm just gonna say down, up, down. And so I have a local min and a local max. Because a min, because it meets at the bottom, a max, because it meets at the top. So uh, my local max, is at three something, and my local min is at negative five something. Those are my x values, and I need to find my y values. So my y is f of x, which is f of three. I plug it into my original function, which is, what is my original function? Here it is. I'm plugging in three. All right, so let's do it. So I'm going to say um, clear three store for x and enter. Okay, three arrow x and enter. I'm going to type in my original function. Don't use this minus over here. That's a minus. This is a negative. So it's negative x to the third, okay, minus 3x squared plus 45x and then minus one. And I just push enter and I got 80. So f of three is 80. So my local max is three comma 80. And then to find my, um, sorry, to find my local min, I gotta find my y, f of x, I plug it in the original, so f of what, negative five? So I don't have to do much in my calculator. I'm gonna say, I'm clear, negative five, store for x and enter, and then I'm gonna just go up and highlight my function. There it is. And I push enter twice, and I get negative 176. Okay, so my uh, local min is negative five comma negative 176. And I saved myself a lot of room, okay, by knowing, let's just recap, four things I need to know. Okay, if your original function is a positive x squared, okay, you're gonna have one, horizontal tangent or critical value, whatever you want to call it, that's what they call it in A, that's what they call it in B, and a positive x squared is a up parabola, right? So that's what it looks like, and it has the local min, no local max. If my original function is negative x squared, I'm gonna find my horizontal tangent or critical value, whatever you want to call it. And it looks like that. So it's going to go up and then down in a local max. So I'm going to have a local max, no local min. 
Okay. All right. Makes life a lot easier. So if I have a positive x cubed and I have two horizontal tangents or critical values, whatever you want to call them, positive x cubed, it's always going to go up, down, up. So you'll have a local max and a local min. Okay. And if your original function is a negative x cubed and you have two horizontal tangents or critical values, and it's a negative x cubed, negative goes down. It goes down, up, and down. So this is a local min, and this is a local max. Okay, and it's just, there's four things to remember that will save you a whole lot of work. So that's what I would do. Okay, there's one more problem that's not either of these. So we actually do have to um, work the problem. Now we know the skills. Here. Okay. okay, so this is not a positive x cubed or x squared. It's a, it looks like x to the four thirds. Let's do it. Um, I rewrite it bigger. So f of x is 2x to the 4 thirds minus 8x plus 10. So to find the critical values, we just set the derivative equal to 0 and solve. Okay, so let's do it. My derivative is what's 2 times 4 thirds? 2 times 4 divided by 3. Uh, is that, but we do the double arrow. And it says, oh, that's 8 thirds x. And then we subtract 1, 4 thirds minus 1 is 1 third minus 8 and set it equal to 0. OK, well, don't panic because you see a bunch of fractions and stuff. Let's go isolate the x. We're trying to get, when we say solve for x, it means it gets x by itself. Let's move that 8 over. So 8 thirds x to the 1 third is equal to 8. Let's get rid of that 3. So let's multiply this side by 3 and this side by 3. So it's going to be 8x to the 1 third is equal to what's 8 times 3? 24. OK, let's divide by 8. All right, so, um, right? X to the one third, okay, that's what I messed up, is equal to um, 24 divided by eight, three. Now, how do I solve that? If X cubed was equal to three, we cube root it, right? But that is the cubed root. So how do I undo the one third? That's like saying the cubed root of x is equal to three. How would I undo that? I would cube both sides. So x is equal to not nine, it's three times three times three, which is what, 27. Okay, so I isolated the x, I moved the eight over, I got rid of the fraction, multiplied both sides by three. So I got the x by itself, I divided both sides by 8, and I got x to the 1 third is equal to 3. So I have to cube both sides to get rid of the 1 third. I have to do the opposite. So 3 cubed, people want to call it 9, but it's 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So my critical value is x is equal to 27. Okay, and since I don't know what this looks like, they want me to use the first derivative test to find local extrema, local max or min. So let's go make a sign chart. Okay, all right, so what goes on my sign chart? My critical value is 27, right? And I know I'm going to need to plug my test numbers into my derivative. Glad I have a calculator. Okay. All right. So let's go pick test numbers. 
what's some number to the left of 27? If I can pick zero, I'm gonna pick zero, okay? And then I can pick 28, all right? So what's F prime of zero? Well, let's do zero, store for X and enter, and type in my antiderivative, I mean my derivative, eight divided by three, x to the one divided by three minus eight. Enter and I get negative eight. And all we care about is what? That it's negative. All right. And then what's f prime at 28? Well, let's just let my calculator do it. I'm going to say 28 and store for x and enter. I'm going to go up and highlight my derivative, eight thirds x to the one third minus eight and push enter and enter again and I get 0 0.09757. I don't care what the number is, I just care that it's what? It's positive. Okay, so now I know if it's negative, my derivative is negative, so my function's decreasing. If my derivative is positive, I'm increasing. So what does that mean to me if it has meets at the bottom. So I have no local max. But my local min is at 27 something. And so my y is f of 27. So I have to put it in my original function, which is what, 2x to the 4 thirds minus 8x plus 10. So that's my f of x. So f of 27, and I'm going to just do my 27. And there's my store for x and enter. And I'll type this in, 2x to the Four divided by three, and then I come down minus eight x plus ten. Enter, and I get negative forty four. So two x to the four thirds minus eight x plus ten is negative forty four. So twenty seven negative forty four is my answer. So we did have to use the calculus, but let's use it when we need it. If we have, that was my original function. So if we have a positive x cubed, a negative x cubed, a positive x squared, or a negative x squared, we know what it looks like. But when we had this, we had to go do the work, okay? And so that's the work, and that's my answer, and that's the end. And so you should be able to be good with your quiz five, and I'll get quiz six material up tomorrow, and then you'll be ready for your test. And you don't have to wait till Easter weekend. You can do it sooner because you're going to have a lot of stuff to do from different classes, and you just want to get this done if you can. So, okay, that's it. And y'all enjoy the rest of your day, and please practice your social distancing.